Hello all you souls and tales out there, welcome to episode 5 of my Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 Let's Play series. If you happen to like the commentary and content found in this episode, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more episodes and content like this in the future. Hopefully with a better mic as time goes on. And John, what the heck are you doing? Okay, well uh, let me know if you see any dragons or whatever, or land, or treasure up there. But let us not waste any more time, let us interrogate a uh, Mr. or should I say Mrs. Paul. Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. Where were you this morning? What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Ugh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. Theodore Golden is dead, I hope you know. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gildon is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. You're asking for trouble. Nah. Let's go. You should be more cautious. This business of yours, you should be more careful. Ruining your life at such a young age is ridiculous. I am careful. Except for you. No one has noticed where I store the smuggled goods. If the police arrive, there's no link to me. It's common storage, not exclusively mine. Let us provide our evidence, then. Alright, suspicious note. Yes. Tell us more about the suspicious note and your psychotropics that you're smuggling in. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing Whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. A uh, thief with honor. What can you tell me about an A. Swift? A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that court owner has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. Since you and Imogen seem to be together, Tell me more about this photo. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Okay, then tell me why you had her pack her bags. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's, um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? 
Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we plan to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Hmm. Okay, then tell me about these darts you also had with your psychotropics. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal, say, an elephant? I've never tried, but I have wondered. Right. Hmm. Goliath, they just tell me more about Goliath. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me, it was frightening. Hmm. All right, since you and Gildan didn't get along, tell me more about that. It seems as though Theodore Gildan hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster, and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. Alright. You need to tell me about this bazookology, uh, fascination everyone has. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. Agreed. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, tell me more about this boson knife. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. Hmm. I know, I'll have her or him at top of my suspects list until something big happens. Let's go to a mine palace, though. Okay, so Theodore attacked Paul. Theodore threatened Paul, so this makes sense. Theodore attempted to destroy Paul. Theodore Gilton was highly motivated to destroy Paul's career and well being, even going so far as to hire criminals. Damage to the shed, and Paul has a fresh bruise. These could be related. Paul, Paul's elbow is swollen and has a fresh bruise. A witness fell on the shed after the incident with Goliath. The unknown person may well be injured from the fall. Hmm. I could make these two go together, but I want more evidence before I do anything. 
All right, so where to we going up to next? Let's see what John says. To show you use clues of deduction to determine who can answer this question, there's merely luck either way. A great success. What's better than a throwing fight? Winning, of course. Sherry truly knows how to have fun without a single cash. All right. Let us go to Bezos Street and Arnott Street. Let's pin that here. I do like the uh, night skyline and the uh, sound effects they have all around. Nice fountain. That is beautiful. The night time. I like how the moon is shining in the sky. The luminance. The luminescence. And I like how the way the people are dressed really makes you feel like you're there. And the architecture of the high-class nobility. Uh, high-class rich people. Pro Night Square. Oh, that's just a night square with a fountain. How are you? I'm fine, thank you for asking, madam. As we make Sherlock run a mile, or maybe even more, uh, I would assume the sky is up, sir. That guy's smoking. As yeah, so it's common for the time period. And even modern day, for some reason. But oh well. Just like curses stand there for some reason as well. I assume in the middle of this is to prevent to help drain the water or something. Okay, those policemen are blockading people, deciding who to let into the city. So I assume the people of Cadona don't like the people in the old city, I assume. Now uh, there's some law regulations. Okay, a cow and a sheep there for some reason. Well, actually it makes sense, being like, if you're leaving this, you know, ancient city and Turkish... Well, hmm. What? Alright, well it does make sense. You have, at the time period, you have these people in the old city, which the is not... The beating heart of the old city. Uh, I wonder if they still sell that Let's not think about food already, John. Let us focus on the investigation. I'm just saying, it doesn't make sense for the time period not having lower class citizens. You don't want them to the believe that they might steal from you in the high class area. Oh so, well, make sure we're going in the right way, so we follow this, yeah. Hava Watchtower? Keep on running, past the chickens, sorry guy over there. Up here. These stairs, down these stairs. And we're almost there. I remember the monument, Cordona's legendary pirate, the Robin Hood of the place. Do you recall it, John? I do. I wonder if... What is that? What is what? The statue? Karim of the Silver Hand, the pirate with a golden heart. 
I told you I remembered him. Hey Sherlock, I'm up here. Guess what I've found? A riddle, and it's about a treasure. Listen to this. What? John, you've surpassed yourself. On the top of the monument was curved the first stone chain of riddles, which as John suggests leads to silver hands lost treasure. The first riddle, a hand with treasure, a crust so sweet, stand where yours and crooked street meet. A few steps towards the mosque left at the stairs, and find the courtyard of wishing all shares. Come on, Sherry, this is just like the old days. Sherlock and John on a pirate's treasure adventure. Oh, the sky's day. Oh, it's sunrise. Well, I do wanna... As much as I would like to... How should I say this? Do that? We'll do that later if we have time. Alright. From day to night, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers for the dig. Alright, so... I assume we listen on these guys. Okay, the frames are dropping a little From bit. From day to night, Aiden stands there, recruiting no All right, very tired now. No, old city marketplace. No, pro British. No, here we go. Entrance to the dick side. I've heard that in order to enter the dick side, I need to be employed. A man named Aiden recruits new workers in the old city marketplace in the west end of the district. He has a skull on his neck and only looks for worker types with bro pitch attitude. Okay. John's Diary, another masterclass in eavesdropping for air from the peerless Sherlock Holmes. Clear eyes, and all ears can't lose. Well, thank you, John. Alright. So I assume we need to dress up. So let us go to the clothing nice affordable thing. Affordable clothes? Let's pick something that suits you. I'll be the judge of that. Worker's apron, okay. This should do. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Alright, let us fast travel to the market. Let's find a uh, informant or whatever guy. Yeah. Doing your merchant. Guna, no. Smuggler, Arab, no. There he is. By informant, I mean. Guy who hires people. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? Brits? Nah. Of course, I'm all for them. I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? I'll sing the national anthem, even though Brits do like their tea. I don't know if that's stereotyping or not, but tea is very lovely. My British breakfast. <laughs> now, go see us. I'll sing the anthem. I'll sing you a very special song. God save our gracious queen. Cut it! Or people here will make you their queen. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural bone digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Alright. Simple enough. Well, since we are nearby, I might as well do the uh, hand thing, or at least the first part. 
if the treasure's not over there, because that's the thing with the vittles, it's never, oh, follow this little and there you're done, there's usually multiple. Because there has to be. Eski Kita Bevi! Hope I said that right. Gul Afsha Karavana Sare! Probably butchered that. I'm sorry for any Turkish viewers who are watching this. You know, whoever watched this in the future. Alright. So we call the riddle mosque for stairs on the left, something about a well. I should probably pin the uh thing. There we go. Second riddle. You're almost there, let us not propose, postpone. You're seeking an ark that's made of stone, head east from the old ruins, my friend. It goes the ancients until the end. So the treasure is real, but tell me, John, how did you even guess there would be something on top of the monument? Didn't I ever tell you about my psychic abilities? I should have. I even know where we ought to go next. Alright, so old ruins, which are over this way in the Grand Survey. Just somewhere over here. Alright, let us continue on with the investigations. Let us not get sidetracked. Proceeds to get sidetracked again. Ah, that's a nice uh, mosque they built. Interesting. Well, we go. Any if any Turkish viewers watching this? How do you think they did with the detail? Try and capture that Turkish uh, culture from the old days in history. History is a very important subject, which I do love. But oh, a break in the uh, fortress, castle. Thing. Salty breeze, old ruins, dusty roads. Do you recall clambering over these walls as a child? Perhaps. Did we find something at the top? A mad rogue. Okay. Guess we're getting sidetracked again. I'm sorry, everyone. Might as well do them over here. Ah, it was an old skull. A lucky find for a pair of young adventurers. It was easier to climb these walls back then. Not merely because we're older, but because the ruins are too. Of course. You said we needed to bury him. Do you remember where? Well, one would think burying a human skull would stick in the mind, but somehow... No. Yeah, you would think. Okay, I guess we follow the... little sprites. An old man was standing here as we passed. Oh yes, I remember his face as we flew by with a skull in our hands. He looked as shocked as our grisly companion. Hmm. All right. Nothing ever bothers an old Ottoman backgammon player. Of course, they must be professional. If any of you is watching this is a professional backgammon player, let me know. Quite interesting game. I hope I said that right, after just hearing it for five seconds. I did know the game's name, I just never really tried to say it. But, okay, inappropriate burial site. This wasn't the right place for a funeral. We were looking for somewhere more appropriate. Funny, nowadays you love putting men behind bars. You're a fellow of infinite jest, aren't you? That he is. John's still there, looking at us. The water level was higher back then. I remember swimming through this mire while trying not to breathe in the horrible odor. How are you swimming in that? 
Oh wait, ah, oh, this looks like to be it. This is where we buried it. It seems that with time, our friend has emerged once more. Hmm. The skull is ancient. Its likeliest owner was one of the knights hospitaller who died during the siege of the fortress. I remember now, you said this skull was my father's. A child's imagination is a powerful tool. You needed this. A burial process of your own. A ritual so you could begin to grieve. Here hung those lips that I have kissed. I know not how oft. <laughs> I felt so alone back then, John. Uncertain. Abandoned by my father. I know. The skull wasn't his, though it may as well have been. In the earth, all of us look alike. But putting this man to rest, it did help. I'm glad, Sherry. I find myself rather tempted to keep it. If not for sentimental value, then it's archaeological merit. Well, we have a skull now, so... That and apparently Sherlock's father died. As sad as that is. But, well... Now we have a skull of a dead warrior who died in a siege of the castle. Even though I feel like this is more of a fortress than a castle since it's by water and everything. I mean, I assume castle can be too, but this seems like too big for a castle castle? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Sorry little girl, boy, child. But regardless, let us get there if we can. Stop loitering and get inside. All right. Here's the archaeological dick set. It will all think I'll end the episode here. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you happen to like the content and the content, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more uh, episodes in the future and commentary, hopefully, like this, uh, improved upon. And in the next episode, we will investigate the dig site, probably meet A Swift, just figure out if he was the culprit or whatever, learn more about Gildan's murder, and maybe we'll get to finish that riddle. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Soul Tales out.